Today we're going to be talking about how to evaluate an integral, which is the product of sine and cosine. And in this particular case, we're talking about the product of sine squared of pi of x times cosine to the fifth of pi of x. And what I want to talk about today is how you evaluate an integral like this when your cosine function is odd, so it's raised to the fifth power, so it's odd, and the sine function is even. So you treat these integrals differently when your sine function is even and cosine is odd than when your sine function is odd and your cosine function is even or when they're both odd or both even. So in this particular case, we're talking about an even sine function and an odd cosine function. We're going to talk about a strategy for evaluating this type of integral. When you have this situation, when you have an odd cosine function, what you want to do is take out one of the cosine functions so that you have, for example, cosine to the fourth times cosine, so that you have an even cosine to the fourth. So let's take a look at what this is going to look like. We're going to work with our cosine to the fifth of pi of x here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave the sine squared of pi of x alone, and the cosine function now, we're going to pull out one cosine function so that we have cosine to the fourth of pi of x times cosine of pi of x. When we do that, the cosine to the fourth, we want to actually factor so that we have essentially cosine squared of pi of x and then square that. So cosine squared of pi of x squared is of course cosine to the fourth of pi of x. So that's cosine to the fourth, and then we have our extra cosine of pi of x. And again, this is going to be the strategy we're going to use for evaluating an integral like this every time the sine function is even and the cosine function is odd. We're going to split out the cosine function like this. So for example, if you just had cosine to the third of pi of x, then you would take out the one cosine function like this, and you'd have cosine squared of pi of x times cosine of pi of x. You just wouldn't have this extra squared term here. If it was cosine to the seventh of pi of x, everything would be the same as you see here, except instead of squared right here, you'd have to the third power. So that's how, that's going to be our strategy for splitting apart this cosine function. Now that we have the cosine function split out in this way, our next step is going to be to use the identity that I've written here as a reminder. Remember that cosine squared of any variable, in this case in the formula we've written theta, but cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared of theta. So we have essentially cosine squared of something right here inside of our big bracket parentheses. So we can make a substitution and put in instead 1 minus sine squared of the same variable pi over x. So we'll go ahead and do that. Again, we'll leave the sine squared here alone. And we'll make a substitution here for 1 minus sine squared of pi x and that'll still be squared, and we'll leave our cosine of pi x out here. At this point, once we've made our substitution for this trigonometric identity here, we want to go ahead and try to simplify the integral. In our particular case, because we have pi x inside of our trigonometric functions here, sine and cosine, we want to simplify that so that this starts looking a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and make essentially a u substitution. We'll use a different variable instead because we're actually going to have to end up making two substitutions and I want to use u for the second one. It doesn't particularly matter, but let's go ahead and make a k substitution. So we'll set k equal to pi of x, and again, this is exactly like a u substitution, I'm just using a different variable. But we'll set k equal to pi of x and we want to take the derivative of k, which will give us dk. The derivative of pi x is simply pi, because pi is like a constant coefficient in front of this x variable here. So we have pi, and then of course we add onto that dx. Now we want to go ahead and solve this for dx. We'll divide both sides by pi and get dx equals dk over pi. So now we can go ahead and make this substitution so that our integral starts looking a little bit simpler. So essentially we'll get sine squared of k, because we set k equal to pi x, so sine squared of k times 1 minus sine squared of k squared times cosine of k. 
and now we have a substitution for dx. We know that dx is equal to dk over pi. So we'll put our dk in here, but the pi, which would normally be right here underneath this dk, we'll go ahead and bring out in front of our integral because everything inside the integral is multiplied together, which means we can bring pi out in front as a constant coefficient on the product that's inside of our integral. So because pi is in the denominator here, we have to bring it out as one over pi in front of the integral. And now that we've simplified that, we can move on to our next substitution step. If you don't have something more complicated than just a single variable inside your trigonometric functions, you can really skip this step and just go straight to the substitution I'm about to do. But if you have something like, you know, pi x or 3x or something like that inside your trigonometric functions, it can be helpful to make this intermediate substitution step. But now that we've gotten this down to just a single variable here, we're gonna go ahead and make a u substitution, and we're gonna set u equal to sine of k. And again, this is just part of the strategy for solving this kind of integral where sine is even and cosine is odd. You can follow these steps every time and you'll, you'll be able to get the right answer. So we'll set u equal to sine of k always, and then we want to take the derivative of u which will be du. The derivative of sine is cosine, so our derivative is cosine of k dk. Now we could at this point solve for dk, but as you can see, we have a cosine of k dk inside of our integral. So instead of solving for dk and then canceling the cosines once we make the substitution, we can just substitute du for this entire cosine k dk right here. So what we'll get when we substitute in our u's instead, since u is sine of k, sine squared of k is u squared. So we'll get u squared here times one minus u squared squared, and then cosine k dk we know is equal to du, so we'll go ahead and substitute in du. Now we can go ahead and just use algebra to expand what we have here and simplify what's inside our integral so that we can evaluate it. Here's what we'll get. We'll get one over pi times the integral of u squared, and now our one minus u squared squared here, essentially we'll get one minus u squared minus another u squared is minus two u squared, and then negative u squared times negative u squared is a plus u to the fourth du. Now we'll just go ahead and multiply the u squared across this polynomial here, and we'll get the integral of u squared minus two u to the fourth plus u to the sixth du. And now we're at a point where we can evaluate our integral. So when we evaluate, remember that we'll Basically, we're just reversing power rule here. We're adding one to the exponent and then dividing by the new exponent. So u squared becomes one third u cubed. We added one to the exponent to get three and then divided by the new exponent. So we have one third out in front. Same thing here, we'll get u to the fifth when we add one to four. So we'll get u to the fifth and then divide by the new exponent. So we'll get two fifths out in front and then we'll get plus one seventh u to the seven. And then of course we always have to add a c to account for the constant of integration. So at this point we would be done except we need to back substitute to get back to our original variable x because right now we have u. So we said, remember, that u was equal to sine of k. So we need to substitute sine of k back in for u. So we'll get one over pi times one third and then we have sine of k, so we're actually gonna get sine cubed of k, right? Instead of sine of k cubed, we can put that back on the sine function like that. So sine cubed of k minus two fifths times sine to the five of k plus one seventh times sine to the seven of k, and then plus c. Now, we have our expression in terms of k, we need to get it back in terms of x. We know that k is equal to pi x, so we need to go ahead and make a substitution pi x for k. While we're at it, let's go ahead and distribute this one over pi right here across our polynomial. So what we'll get 
is 1 over 3 pi, right? That comes from multiplying the 1 over pi by this 1 third here. So 1 over 3 pi times sine cubed of pi x, and this is back substituting pi x for k, minus 2 over 5 pi, again bringing this pi here across, times sine to the fifth of pi x plus 1 over 7 pi times sine to the seventh of pi x and of course plus c. And that's it. This is our evaluated integral. This is the strategy that you use, again, making the transformation of cosine, making the substitution using this trigonometric identity, making this intermediate substitution if you need to, but you don't have to if you have a simple variable, and then using u substitution with u equal to sine of your variable, simplifying and solving. So you can use this strategy every time to evaluate an integral like this, and this will be your final answer. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.